So you've just gone and picked up Franchise Hockey Manager for the first time. You've just gone in, you've created your character, you've picked some stats, you've picked a team. But what the heck do you do next? In this video, I'm going to run through five, six, but five kind of tips for your very first day so you can get yourself going as a new head coach or GM. So I've just gone in, I've just set myself up as the head coach at Anaheim, alphabetically, no other reason than that. Um, and you get a few little bits and pieces, a bit of information, as you can see, because I uh, did it after the game started, we get to see that Pat Verbeek was fired. But you get a nice little introduction message from the organization. So that you know that you've got a contract, how much it's worth, who the owner is, and what their league objective is. So for the Ducks, they just don't have to be last. It gives you a budget, you've got 85 million, you're currently spending just close to 81 million of that. So you got about 4 million to spend. And they suggest you look at the roster, depth charts, and personnel to get familiar with the organization. We'll cover some of that. However, the reason why I said 565 five, unsure is I think there is a bit of a bonus one. As part of the Ducks, you get a couple of feeder teams. And if you pick any other NHL team, you'll also have a couple of feeder teams. And this is where you can kind of move some players down that you might just want to get some development time on. However, they don't get logos. So the first thing to do, I reckon, is get some logos. So the first thing you do is you go onto your search engine of choice, put in outoftheparkdevelopments.com, just pop to the forums. I'll put a link in the description of this thread here. But this is the updated list of released mods as of January 2024. So there are a whole load of additionals that you can get that we won't really cover in this. Uh, but the key one to look at is at the very top franchise hockey manager nine logo pack at the moment there isn't one for 10. If you go into that you will find two download files one if you want to download it via steam you can i wouldn't recommend it there's extra steps you've got to do or the second one is you can just go into the github and you can just go and download the file so that's what we'll do here we'll just go in there you would download it and once it's done we then go and put it into our file and we'll cut to that in a moment. All right, and once your file is downloaded, just use whichever extract file of choice, just unzip it. I'm just gonna undo it here. And then once that's done, you will need to find where your files are stored. So by default, it should go to my documents, then out of the park developments, then franchise hockey manager 10. Um, however, I just for to make it easier for me, I, and you can always see it in here where your path is, I've just got mine set to D and then FHM 10. So you just need to go and find that as well. Now with your file unzipped and you'll see it here, you'll get a readme if you want to read it and you've got quick start games. And you can also see in the main FHM folder. So again, other part developments in the my documents and then FHM the version and you'll find a similar folder. You can then just get that file, drag it in and it will start copying over all of the logos. Now what that should do is it should mean that next time you go in, you go into Quick Start and you load up a game, you should find that it brings up the images. However, we've already got a game going. So what we do instead is we go in to the file and we're gonna copy it into the active game. Okay, to do that, what you do is you just go into that zip file again, just grab the Quick Start games. You just open it up, go in to either one of the files because they're both exactly the same and then you'll get these five folders so you've got pictures of awards you have the logos of the leagues logos of all the teams including ones that weren't in there previously so if we look for the san diego goals and we should find they're right there so what we're going to do is we're going to grab that folder. We're going to go into the saved games folder of our D drive or your my documents folder. You go into the actual file. You would have named your game something. So you go into that, go into graphics, and then you're going to get this. You just take all these files, pop it in there, wait for it to be done, and then reload the game. So once you reloaded the game, you just pop up to your team of choice you move over you can now see when you select the goals that they have their logo if you want to move down even further and if you go to the Tulsa Oilers you'll see that they also have their logo and you can just move up and down throughout the teams that way or you can pick another league you can always just double check say in the OHL 
and then you can see all of their teams have all got their logos as well. You do that with face packs as well if you want. You can do that with face gens. You can kind of set it up so it looks super good from day one. Right, on to the first thing that we do then. Let's go and have a look at our team. So there are two ways that you can actually just bring up your roster screen. First way you can do it is on the right hand side. Second option down here, just under the mailbox, is a roster. I'm not a big fan of this menu on the right hand side. It doesn't quite work for me. So what I do is I just go up to the ducks in general and everything we can do with the team is up here. Everything we do with the league is here and everything I can do with me is there. So if we go into that, we go to roster. This is everybody that is on the team as we speak right now. So best thing to do is just filter it via position and just try and work out who your good players are. So looking at the two, you know that Gibson is better than Dostal. If we then go into defense, you can see that you've got a couple of, when you look at it, Cam Fowler is our best defender. We've got a few that are one out of five stars and three is kind of averaging, two is, mm, it's all right. Um, yeah, you're looking at it, we've got um, Vakanen who is probably not going to be brilliant. He's 24, he's probably not going to develop much further than he already is. So just looking at that, left defense is probably something we wanna look at. We then move to right defense. We can see that we've got a bit of a stud coming up here with Drysdale, but we've got a couple of, especially this one here, whose name I would never be able to pronounce. He is not getting much better than he already is. He's hit his potential. Um, he is probably someone that we might want to trade away. And trading is, is something for another video. We look at this one, Lunian. He's one and a half stars out of three. He's got room to grow. Three is a, a good NHL player. So looking at that, defense is probably a weak aspect. Looking at our wingers, you can see McTavish is a four and a half. He's only three at the moment. He's only 20. He's got a lot of room to grow. He's a player we probably want to keep an eye on. Looking at Henrik, he's 33. He's tapped out as a, an okay player. Johnson, again, he's not going to get any better. Jones has got a little bit of room to grow. As we keep working our way through, you can see here Zegras. He is the, you know, the Anaheim poster boy, isn't he, at the moment. He's four stars. It's going to be five. He's only 22. He should probably hit that. You got your right wings. So you just go through. You look at who you've got that's good, who you've got that's terrible. But that isn't everybody that you have. You can see down the bottom here, you've got 23 players. If I just filter that via F1 again, you've got 23 players on your active team. However, if you go to contracts, we've got 47 contracts. So these are players that are all contracted to Anaheim in some capacity or another. I mentioned earlier, that's why I wanted to bring them up. We've got the girls and we've got the Oilers. They're our farm teams. They are where we can try and get some decent players or where we can send players when they are needing to be developed. We've got that, maybe that 19 year old who's gonna be five stars, but currently at the moment he's only two and a half. Maybe he's not good enough to play for us right now, but we move him down to then so he can get some game time. So in your contracts is where you can see everybody that is contracted to yourself. Now it's a big old list and the easiest way to probably look at that big old list is actually to move to your depth charts instead. Kind of gives you a little bit more of a visually appealing way of trying to work out who you've got. So you've got a nice little color coded section there. You've got the bright green ones are people that are contracted to you and on your current roster. So most of the people that you saw on that very first screen there. You then have the blue ones that are people that you have contracts but not on rosters at the moment. So these will be people that are with different teams at the moment. So Chase DeLeo is with the Gulls. Justin Kirkland is with the Tucson Roadrunners, which is an AHL team I wanna say. I might be wrong on that one, yep. So you can actually just go through and you can get a bit of an idea of where your players are. We just need to quickly move back to Anaheim again there. And you've got the red ones. Red ones are protected players. So these are people that you've seen in the draft, you've picked in the draft, but you haven't actually signed a contract for. And I believe they can't sign a contract with anyone else until a certain period has passed. And again, not something to bring up in an introductory episode. But it just gives you an idea kind of who your best players are. And you can, in a moment, we'll cover that, shift around where they want them to. But yeah, that just gives you a really good idea. 
showing you've got a lot of defenders in the system. So you can see here there's lots of people in the system down the bottom there. But yeah, you're kind of looking at the top ones to be your players of choice. That is the team. So let's look at the staff next. So staffing kind of falls into two different sections. Section number one is head to staff and you can see your staff. So you got your owner, you can't do anything about, you'll have yourself, you'll have your assistant coach and you can see how much money you've got to play around with. So underneath you've got the breakdown of all of your staff, everyone that is employed there. And then at the bottom here, you have the various different people in the roles. So you can see here, Sushan Marajaj, probably butchering his name. He's our goalie coach. Thompson is our defensive. Newell is our offensive. Jim Johnson, skill. John Leconioni is our trainer. Now, if you wanted to, you can employ different people. So you might find that, for instance, you get a guy whose trainer skill is terrible and he's not very good for a trainer. So you might want to go in, you might want to just shift people around. You might want to assign them to different roles. So yeah, you might want to go, all right, well, Larry Barron, yes, I appreciate your assistant coach, but I want you to be trainer at the moment and you can shift them all around. That's the first section. What that does is that kind of allows the players in various different areas to get better in training. And we will very quickly cover training in the next section that we're gonna talk about. Um, but before we move on to that one, we also have scouting as part of staff. So scouting is very important. You wanna get a good idea of what players you wanna sign are like and what players coming through the systems or people that you might be picking up in the future are like. Staff and scouting is where you do that. So you can flick between various different areas to get a bit of an idea of how good your scouting is. Ideally, you want it up in the greens and blues as best as possible. So you can see at the moment, Canada is very well scouted. United States is very well scouted. That makes sense for an NHL team. As you move into Western Europe, you'll find that most of the West side isn't brilliant. But if you move up to places like Sweden and Finland, which are good, well-known hockey places, you'll find that the scouting has improved. If we then move to Eastern Europe, you will find that the Czech Republic, again, where a lot of good players come from, and Russia, where lots of good players come from, of good and scouted, over the rest of the regions, including whatever that is. Don't quite know what that one is. My geography isn't brilliant. And then rest of the world, because it's the rest of the world, they kind of give you it in figures. You don't get a lot of great players coming through those, but it just gives you a rough idea of how you're scouting. What you can do is if, for instance, there is a region that you really want some decent players in, so maybe Denmark, potentially, you go to the higher scouts region, you can have a look and see roughly where they are based. If you like the look of any particular player, so we're looking like Western Europe, We've set it alphabetically. If we scroll down and we want to find somebody that can potentially do Denmark. Nope, which is very annoying. Uh, Copenhagen, I believe is that particular area. Again, geography isn't my strong suit. Just right click on them, Iris Scout, pick one, two or three seasons, boom. And then you can now see that region has massively improved and the other regions have got better so they haven't moved quite up, they moved from orange to yellow. So it means that we got a better idea and when the scouts do things like their priorities and what they look at, we're gonna get better information in those regions. Okay, moving on, delegating. So yeah, it's your first day, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of stuff that you're really not gonna to wanna to deal with. So you delegate some of it to your assistant coaches and your own staff. So if you go to managers, go to options and you look at this side over here and this is where you're gonna delegate. So you get the option between doing, between yourself and your assistant. I'd recommend if you are pretty new to the game, definitely set scouting, and I would always set training as a system. Then you've got various options. So roster moves, you can move players up and down. So as I mentioned previously, you can bring people down and put them into the goals, or if you get an injured player, move somebody up from the goals to take their place while they recover. And you can, if you want to, have that set to yourself, or if you just wanna sort of pick the players that are on your team, set that to the assistant. Transaction, sign in and releasing players, you've got that option. Initiate and reacting to trades, you can get the AI to do that, so you're just coaching and playing with the players that are there. 
Then you get the drafts. Certain leagues have drafts, so you can pick players and draft them into your league. Do you want to do that yourself or not? You turn that on and off. If you don't want to deal with staff that we talked about a minute ago, if you don't want to deal with their contracts, if you really want to not deal with them saying, I want a particular jersey number, you just switch that off. Financial settings are something that you can deal with. It is kind of fun sometimes, but you can go through, you can increase, you can use points, which is basically currency. The bigger the team, the more revenue you get in, the more points, and you can spend points on things like better scouting, making sure your morale and your team are happy, or going through and increasing attendance, bonuses, or penalties. You also get player expenses and staff expenses. You do that annually on July the 1st, and then you can do it month by month in a meeting. You can up and down it. But yeah, you have the option in this section. If you just don't want to deal with the finances, if you think that's just too much, go and turn it off. You can if you want to. If you really want to micromanage that player on that farm team, you can say, right, I want to deal with the lines on the goals. I want to make sure my player gets all the best ice time. You can turn those on or off. So you can deal with the staff, you can deal with the lines. Personally, I like to leave them to do it. I'm managing my team. I'll let them manage their team. Cool, that is delegating. Let's move on next to tactics. So tactics is a bit of an optional one because you can go in and you can just get your assistant to do it. However, it's always something it's probably worth looking at just to make sure that, well, A, if you wanna do it yourself, you know how to do it, and B, just making sure that your assistant coach isn't just mucking it up. So you pop into your team, pop into tactics, and you'll get this screen here. Now that's a lot to take in. This side is probably what you wanna look at. You can, if you want to, just get them to set the tactics and get a bit of a rough idea of how they wanna set this. So that, that is kind of how often they would attack, how aggressive they would be, how often they back check, what kind of pressure they would put on the other team. If you want to, you can hover over it. It does give you information on what they do how often they hit, how fast they play, how often they pass, and how often they shoot. This section here, this is one to have a quick look at. So you might need to go a little bit of backwards and forwards. You might need to have a quick look at your roster. It's always a good idea as well. You can just click on various different areas to try and filter it. You want to look at your older player, just click up there. There you go, Henrik's the oldest. If you want to see who your best player is, click up there. It's filtered via star rating. So it's always a good idea to get a bit of an idea of who your good players are before you look at your tactics. You want your tactics to fit with your good players. So head back to the tactics screen and then you can have a look at the breakout. So you get various different tactical settings. When you're on a breakout, what do you wanna do? So you just have a quick look and what I usually do is I will try and work out, look at my list, I've got Zegers, Strom, Terry, McTavish, Gibson. Gibson's a goalie, don't really care much. He's not gonna probably fit in this list much. And Fowler. So Cam Fowler being a great fit there is fine. He's one of my best players. Gudas, yeah, you didn't hit my list. So I'm not really fast if it's a bad fit for you. You would go through, you'd have a look. So McTavish is there, you don't want that. It's a bad fit, he's one of the good players. It's a good fit for Zegras. Zegras is our best player. It's not a bad fit for anyone else. So through centre might be the option that we use. You look at stretch. Terry is on our list, it's a great fit. McTavish is on our list, it's a good fit. These three are not on our list, but it's still a good fit. There's nobody that's a bad fit for. You keep having a look. It's good for him, it's good for him. Johnson, we don't care about. It's a bad fit. Silverberg's all right. He didn't quite make my list of top six, but there's a couple of bad and terrible fits. We might not want that one. And then strict positional. So Zegras, Terry, Fowler, it's a good fit for those. Again, a couple of bad fits. So I would probably select through center. It does give you a bit of an idea of what it does and best used with. Um, but again, it's a good fit because he is a good skater and good puck handling. So you just go through, you just make sure that neutral zone offensive, you just wanna make sure that it's a good fit for your good fitters. If there are players that it is a bad fit for, you know, check them out. If they're terrible, it's probably not gonna matter. So yeah, you just go through those and you would set them up as you see fit. There's quite a few, but it just gives you a rough idea kind of what you do in the offensive zone, what type of way you play it. Do you go behind the net? Do you cycle the puck around? Do you crash the net? So it's all here. But again, you can just get them to set the tactics. If you really want to, you can get into each individual line and what they do. That's not a day one thing though. Or you can go into what each individual player does. So you can pick their roles and what they do. If you want this guy, if he's a, a proper tank, 
set them to hit really, really hard and back check really, really hard. Just turn those on to make sure that it uses them. Again, it's an optional one. Finally then, we look at the lineups. So once again, back on the main screen, we go to the team, we go to lineups, and this is kind of where we start building our team. Again, if you want to, you can literally just get the AI to do it. So you can see here, it's put them in. So you can, so yeah, so you can see all the names in the list there. So McTavish, Segris, Terry, Fowler, Strom, they're all there. Gibson is in goal, which is over here. So you can see he's the best goalie. If you're looking at this though, what you might find is according to the AI, this guy here, Stalock, may be better than Dorstal. So that might be worth having a bit of a look at. You can right click, you can remove them. You can actually click and drag and move them around. So if we just set that line up again, we might say actually we want Dorstal to start. What you can do, it's entirely up to yourself which way around you want to go, but you can just clear the line out and you go, all right, so I know, looking at my list, that I want Zegras to start. So you can just find him. He's going to be my first center. I then want Strom to be there. And you can start building up your lines. Maybe you just want Carson next. I'm literally just picking names as I see them. You're a left wing. So you just start building your team. I will just set it quickly back to that. Once you've done that, once you've set it up, how you exactly want your players, who you want to play more often sits at the top and who you want to play less often sits at the bottom. What you can then do is you just go into your lines and this is what you're going to put out on the night. So once again, you can click and drag just for the night if you want, or you can go in here and you can ask it, we'll just clear the lines for you so you can really see it. We just go in and say, right, can you create the lines from the lineup for me? What it does is it takes the lineup information, it looks at who it should be playing more often, and it puts them towards the top of the list. It is useful because if you do get a player that is off, say for instance, Carson has an injury, it will more than likely just move Carrick up for you and there's not a lot of shifting around. It's also worth looking at their roles. So you'd go into the line screen. You can, if you want to, just get the AI to do it for you. It looks at those players what particular roles they are good at. Yeah, so if you wanna look into their roles, there's one of two ways that you can do it. Number one is you can find the player that you wanna look at. So maybe we're looking at Drysdale's role. You can click on him and you can see over here, his role. If you click on that, it gives you the options of what he can do. Higher the number, the better he is in that particular position. So ideally, he would be a Russian defenseman. Red are important skills for that role. So if you look at like a quarterback, he would need to be good at those three there, if I can bring that one back up. But green is the key skill, that's the one skill that it really requires. So to be a quarterback, he needs to be able to read the offense, if that makes sense. To be a two-way defenseman, he needs to be able to position himself. To be a mobile defenseman, he needs to be fast. You can see they change. And these low scats here, he's not a very good enforcer. He's not very aggressive. He's not very brilliant at screening. His strength is pretty good. Key skill fighting though, not brilliant. So he does make a very good enforcer, agitator, or goon. So that's the first way that you can set those skills, or you can just click on that instead. It takes you into this version and you can just check them here. So for instance, he could potentially be a setup man. However, you can't see the stats. So usually it's better to go in this way and then just make sure that they are good at what you're setting them up for. Once you've done that, you have pretty much got a team ready for your opening night. And at that point, you can start pressing continue and start working your way towards the preseason. We're gonna leave that video there. If you did like it, feel free to put a thumbs up on it. Comment if you want to, if there's anything that you think that has been missed or anything that you would do differently on your very first day. If there is interest, what we might do is we might continue it into the first week where we'd look at things like the trade block, and you know, moving and promotion and demotion of players. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.